Well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Rob Cunningham and uh, I'm on assignment for CD Media. And it is an honor for me to represent the fine journalist at CD Media, the entire family, Todd Wood. And it is our absolute pleasure to have a special honored guest, Pascal Najati, if I didn't get that correct, Pascal. Yes, sir. Uh, Pascal is uh, speaking to me from Geneva, Switzerland. He has one of the most powerful, uh, heroic stories uh, regarding his life, his background, um, his trials and tribulations over the last three years, how he is uh, protecting the honor of not only his family, but every member of Switzerland and literally every member of the world, includes specifically the United States of America. So, Pascal, it is an honor. Thank you, sir. It's my honor, sir, and thank you for your time. And uh, I would say um, good evening or good afternoon or good day to the United States of America and all the Americans and beyond. Yes, sir. Well, if you don't mind, let's start from the beginning. If you could give yeah. the audience the background on your uh, professional career, your banking sure. career, your diplomacy career, and how we got to where we are today. Sure. Thank you, uh, Rob. Uh, it's a great honor. Uh, look, uh, I'm born and raised in Switzerland. My mother is Swiss. My father was a Persian banker. He got unfortunately assassinated in 2013 in Malaysia. Um, we, I grew up in Switzerland. Uh, I did the uh, Swiss military. My mother's side, great grand uncle, was president of Switzerland in the Second World War, Rudolf Minger. Um, I've done the Swiss Air Force Air Defense for two years, solid, and then repeat courses. So I know what's, what is to be in the military and the honor that you carry to always be ready to defend your country and your people. Um, I became an investment banker. Uh, I used to work in London. I used to work for Merrill Lynch at the time. So Merrill Lynch was the biggest investment firm in the world. We called them the Thundering Herd. I uh, had an office in New York, in Manhattan and in London, flying forth and back. And uh, we advised governments on the, um, on government debt crisis, already then it was a problem, as you can imagine. Um, and through that, I learned how to deal with diplomacy because I was advising heads of states and ministers in crisis. Uh, my area of expertise was the African continent, the Middle East from uh, Egypt down to Oman, uh, Central Asia, focus on Kazakhstan, and then the Russian Federation and Central Europe. Um, I'm now retired, and through the PSYOPs of COVID, uh, we were law-abiding, and we, we believe that Swiss, our Minister of Health, who's now president, and um, we had to travel, so we decided as a family in Switzerland to get uh, injected by Pfizer. Uh, that was the biggest mistake of our lives, as we know now. Uh, again, we trusted our today president and Minister of Health, which he still is today, and we trusted all the doctors uh, who were advocating in that PSYOP COVID, uh, which was advocated uh, criminally by WHO. Now, uh, on the 10th of October, 22, that's very important, Pfizer manager Johnny Small admitted in the European Parliament that they have not tested the injections for immunity and transmission. When I learned that, I filed criminal charges against Alan Berset, the Swiss president today, for his vaccination policy in Switzerland. Um, the criminal charges are pending now with the federal prosecutor of Switzerland in Bern. And I have to say, the presumption of innocence applies to Alan Berset, Swiss president. It's an ongoing procedure, to be fair. Anna McCarthy, an American Panamanian citizen, a widow um, with four children, contacted me out of New York on the 27th of February, saying that she could attach my criminal charges filed and a, Pfizer, a, a, a UK ruling against Pfizer in London uh, to her case. And she filed successfully together with my case in one document um, on the 6th of March, 2023, at the New York State Supreme Court in Manhattan, New York, 
uh, litigation lawsuit against Pfizer Inc. New York, because Pfizer is 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 domesticated in the state of New York, United States. We did not go for medical arguments. It's very important. We did not go for criminal charges. It's very important. Anna McCarthy is a jurist. She's not an attorney licensed in the state of New York. But Anna McCarthy argued, we argued, that an American corporate, and that goes for Johnson, Astra, and Moderna as well, cannot violate US laws that uh, bind them at home abroad. Um, as you know, um, the COVID law of 21 was rejected, well, and by the US Supreme Court ruled, I think it's the 13th of January 22, the US Supreme Court, which holds the same juridical power like the White House, ruled that there is a medical exemption under the First Amendment of the US Constitution for everybody in the United States of America. Meaning, if you say, I feel religious, no matter what religion, that's it. You are not subject under no law, under no emergency, to any vaccination whatsoever. Joe Biden failed to inform the American people about this decision. He failed to inform 205 nations in the world about this decision, that there was this US Supreme Court ruling of January 22. In my opinion, he's in violation of the First Amendment of the US Constitution. Let politicians take care of that fact. What it means now for every American and every citizen in the world is the fact that no one can force you to be injected by any of those COVID vaccines, which are from four American companies, Pfizer Inc., Johnson, AstraZeneca, and or Moderna. You can simply say, I'm religious. That's it. So in this uh, Twitter message of last night, Anna McCarthy spoke to the world on a video message, which is on my Twitter, at Pina Jadi, which you could please put in your reference. I will list that. Underneath. She made a very clear statement, a legal statement, to the world and to all Americans, of course, that the COVID vaccination program is over. The mandates are done and over with. It's done. Because we have argued rightfully with our case against Pfizer, those arguments that I just told you, and they're valid. That also prompted on the 8th of April, um, the judges to inform Joe Biden, the White House, which he had then to sign on April 10, that was Easter Monday, the bill HJ7, go and verify in the White House website. It says one line and no mainstream media reported it, Yet it's the biggest news of all in three years, ending the national emergency of COVID-19 in the United States of America. It's right there, black and white in front of you. That's it. Also, what you have to know, Joe Biden got rejected by the judges on the 23rd of March, 2023, in the Fifth Circuit Appeals Court in New Orleans, with his demand claim as the CEO of the country, which he claimed, he has the right to vaccinate employees of US agencies, federal agencies. The judges ruled, no, Mr. President, you don't have this authority. In fact, no US president has such authority. And in the same ruling, which you can check on online in the court, they ruled and reaffirmed that vaccination in the territory of the United States of America is an exclusive affair between the physician, I mean the doctor, and the patient, end of statement. Those are now the prevailing laws and facts. That means the COVID vaccines are over. Antarctica, South Pole, I mean, North Pole, wherever you want to go, it's over, it's finished. And this is thanks to Anna McCarthy. She is my hero and my partner in this lawsuit, um, which she filed the case number is 10197. Can you repeat that case number one more time? Case number is 10197, New York 
State Supreme Court Manhattan. And, and um, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 the judge is Honorable Justice Lori Sattler. If you go online to New York State Supreme Court, you'll find the case. There's only one against Pfizer, it's ours. And it's right there in front of you. Pascal, I will link all of this information for the reference for the audience members so they can see, both they can follow you, your website, your Twitter. Um, yeah, we have a website, um, NMP, November Mike Papa dot associates. Yes, sir. In there is the court filing, the screenshot, why the uh, Joe Biden had to sign on April 10. It's all there. Pascal, before I ask you this next question, I, sir, as a former Air Force officer and a military guy and a, an investment banker with Merrill Lynch, I want to, I want to thank you for what you're doing. I, I know that your mother is, um, eighty-one years old. Yes, sir. Suffering from three shots. Uh, you are your wife. Yes. Uh, I know you just had a. If you don't mind me, you had a procedure yesterday. You're very. You're, you're you're bucking up and you're speaking with me today, but I know that you're not feeling a hundred percent. And uh, no, I had a, a blood transfusion uh, yesterday, and uh, uh, I anyway, we're dealing with it, and you can do things. We have to fight it. Yes, Pascal. What I, what I find absolutely remarkable is not only did the Supreme Court say no, you cannot do this, and on Easter Monday, April seven, we have Joe Biden who April ten. April 10, April 10, he signed an order officially ending the COVID emergency. And yet we have not a peep out of the mainstream media. There is the, you would think the opposite of all the hoopla and the scrolling and the and the breaking news and the 24-7 hysteria that we live through, they would be popping champagne corks and celebrating with the world this good news. They're saying nothing as schools are still trying to mandate teachers and students and kindergartners, and they're still promoting, selling, and profiting from something that is over. It's over. And they are in violation of they are in violation of the US Constitution and US laws. Please, everybody has the right to refuse, and if not, they can go and file charges. It's over. I mean, again, go to the White House website. By the way, the link is in our website. It's there. It's a one-liner. <laughs> if you could speak to uh, an average couple who's, let's say, not political, they don't, they haven't done a lot of research. They, they've, they, they sense something's wrong. There's chaos. They're not getting the full story. They're not being told the truth. What is the overarching theme, the, the message, a person you've never met, but you still care for, from an officer, civilian, businessman, foreigner who's not an American, not a politician, what would you say to the average American about how to process what we've just gone through? I think you have to face reality. Certainty is better than uncertainty, believe me. No violence, please. What is past is the past. Important is the now of today, and it's peace. And remember, it's peaceful justice. Justice is peace, which has stopped this madness. Okay? And please, um, do not take up violence for this. this that's not good. Um, we, we have to learn from this. This will never, ever happen again. And those responsible, they will face justice. Don't worry. They will face justice and they have to answer questions, a lot of questions. That is CDC, Mr. Fauci, Mr. Biden, all these people. Okay. Um, let justice take this into their hands. And, and, and I want to make a compliment to US justice, as you can see, straight as an arrow. Okay. I also commend the US Congress, which is asking questions now, and they are good questions, and they'll be answered by the people who are responsible for this. Please face the reality. I know it's difficult. By, by denying it, they made you, us, they tried to make us, they tried, complice in their crime by denying it. No, we don't deny it. We, we understand it happened. And we are awake. Wake up and just please understand 
that this was an attack on humanity. And it is a genocide of biblical dimensions. I have no other words for it, but we stopped it now. And the future is important and we have to repair and we have to find out the remedies physically. We, there is ways to, 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 to deal with this. Unfortunately, far too many souls have been lost and they're dying. And I'm also not in a good way, but we are humans. We are sticking together. No more division between vaxxed and unvaxxed. It's behind us. We have to stick together as humans in peace. That's beautifully said, Pascal. And, and if you could speak to and, and have a cup of coffee or just a nice dinner meal in, in Switzerland, invite over the president of the American Medical Association and the head of the CDC, and the two, the three of you sat down. What conversation, person to person, would you have with those two individuals? What what can they do to educate, inform, and motivate people to stop and do no more harm from this point forward? I think those responsible have to apologize, but it won't be enough. And I think we have to have new heads at the departments, I'm very sorry to say that. Um, the WHO has to be investigated. They have been pushing this, okay? And by the way, um, for those responsible, I'm very sorry. Um, I can't forgive them. I, I can forgive other people who were angry at me because I was telling out the truth, etc. But those who were responsible for this, uh, they have to face, otherwise justice isn't, you know, we have to have justice. You mentioned again, Anna McCarthy, who was a very, very brave partner uh, who, allowed you to, who allowed you to participate with her in support of justice. You mentioned she is a cousin to the Speaker of the House, Kevin McCarthy. No, no, she's not the cousin. I just know that her late husband, and God rest his soul, was a a uh, U.S. Special Forces helicopter pilot officer, unfortunately perished on a previous vaccination program. And I think uh, he, and I, I count him as still being with us in the heart, uh, is related as a cousin, I think, or related to the Speaker of the House, but I don't know. I'm not from the family. So her, her husband's name, McCarthy, was related to yes. Speaker McCarthy. Okay, so the third most highest elected officer in the United States of America has a direct, you know, family I, member, I, I, familial I know, relationship but, involved. Yeah. And she is, without disclosing, is she suffering as well? Uh, thank God Anna McCarthy is not vaccinated. And thank God her children are not vaccinated. Thank God. Thank God. Yes. Okay. yes. Pascal, we do know that the largest customer of Pfizer was the Department of Defense, correct? Yeah, it's it's uh, it's evident the papers are out, and uh, I think Elon Musk helped us that this truth comes out. Yeah. And why would the Department of Defense, a military unit and contractor with bases all over the world, be purchasing, budgeting, purchasing, and taking delivery of what, by all measures, is considered a bioweapon and not a vaccine? What would be the motivation for these orders taking place many, 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 many years ago? Yeah. Why would Look. they have ordered them 10 years ago and take possession of them and then distribute them the world over? If, if I would be prosecutor, I'm not. But if, if I would be a prosecutor with the powers equipped, I would investigate the links between Mr. Fauci, CDC, WHO and certain elements of the DOD. I do not believe that the entire DOD was involved in this. Okay. And I would also investigate links between Mr. Biden and others. Um, yeah, that's it. Um, I cannot believe, and I do not believe that the entire US military is behind this. Remember, there's some very, very good senior US military of um, um, uh, leaders and generals who are now looking into this, I'm sure. And, you know, there's certain departments of the US military that are weeding out, like the US Space Force, which are still very loyal to the people and all this. So, uh, yeah. 
Yes, sir. I, and, and I and I and I would love to highlight that by no means are we inferring or implicating in this discussion that the vast majority of people in the medical profession, in the military, and even in the government aren't good-hearted, good-natured people. They're not intentionally evil, but they are just as susceptible of being misled as you were, as I was, as any person on earth they could have been given false information. They could have been pressured with their job. They could have been intimidated. They could have been given half the information instead of all the information. They were coerced and pressured by politics to do something without complete information. That is all that we're saying. I think what you just said is absolutely correct and correct. I mean, really correct what you said. Yes, I believe. Yeah. So it is a it is a hard pill for us to swallow that, it is. that there is a level of evil in this world that for whatever reason they decided to move forward with this very plainly and evidently with 2020 hindsight, there seems to be something far greater motivating this movement than health. Yes, and look far beyond that. Precisely, for me also, that's for sure. WHO, World Health Organization, the word health is disqualified because they have been advocating pushing countries into this. Again, I would investigate very quickly the links between WHO, Tedros, and all these people, Bill Gates, CDC, Fauci, and I'm sure you get two answers. WHO is disqualified. They have pushed this. That's it. And Trump was right. He pulled out of this organization. Very wise move. Pascal, last question for you, because I know that we both have to jump here. Uh, in the local communities, in our cities, in our school districts, in our hometowns, how do you recommend we peacefully meet educate, organize, chat with the mayors, chat with the city council, chat with the school board and the principals and the sheriffs and come together as one voice to end this nonsense today. How would it's you recommend that individuals do that? It stopped already. I mean, again, it stopped already by law. So if anybody is forcing you in a school, university, go to the sheriff and show them the website of the White House. COVID is over. Signed, Joe Biden, Bill HJ7. Also, go to the New Orleans court website, appeals court, decision taken, 23rd of March. That's it. No agency can be mandated to vaccinate by the president. Therefore, all the vaccination, Homeland Security, state, you name it, is invalid. It's over. And it's in violation, again, of the First Amendment of the US Constitution. And that applies worldwide because a US company abroad cannot violate US laws because they're US companies. That's it. It's over. Go to see your doctors. Make the blood test. That's important now. Look for your health, those who have been injected. And those who are not injected, God bless you all and help those that have been vaccinated. Be comforting with them. Help them if they need help, counsel, to talk, to understand. They need help. We need help from the unvaccinated because it's tough to understand that you've been injured by your government. And, you know, it's even tougher. It's even tougher if you have motivated your children to do this. But again, you've got to face the reality. OK, we cannot deny it anymore. We've got to do something for our health. And that is, is, is possible. Not everybody will die. OK. And to say it uh, very briefly, we have to embrace love and empathy and support one another, regardless of what is happening. Justice will be had. We can yeah. turn justice over to God. Justice will prevail. But in the interim, we must support one another with love and empathy, vaccinated and unvaccinated, come together, 
There is no retribution, no acrimony, no I told you so. In humility and grace and empathy, we need to come together as people and help one another get past this tragedy. And But that does not mean justice will not prevail. Exactly. Again, justice has her own ways, like God has its own ways. I trust, especially U.S. justice, Swiss justice, other countries are following now. Again, what you said is right. We have to now, as humans, be together, shoulder to shoulder, no violence, and go about our lives again. Okay, there's a life to be lived and loved, and that's important. That's the power that the evil hates is love, and we are stronger. Pascal, I am so honored to have had this time with you, sir. I am so grateful for your efforts, both abroad on the other side of the pond, as well as here. Thank you for your service and thank you for your time today, sir. It's been an honor. Yes, sir. Thank you very much uh, for all of this. And, you know, I'm so glad that we have, in fact, if you look at it, it's U.S. justice now that has stopped all this. And I commend U.S. justice for doing straight as an arrow her job and the Congress as well. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I'll speak with you Thank soon. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank bye -bye. you. Bye -bye.